it is day four and I just left Riggins, Idaho at about quarter after ten. So riding along the Big Salmon River here. Whoops, slow down for this guy. Alrighty. Putting up some Jersey barriers. This is the end of the road there. Main road left, dead end there. I love it. Let's stop here real quick. Nobody's behind us. Yeah, gander at that river. Gorgeous. The artistic hand of God is all over this country. All right. I've got the the track here to my GPS, but I can't figure out which is the correct track number. Guess I should have looked at it a little more closely beforehand, but we'll figure it out. We're not lost, we're in Idaho. Anyway, well, when we figure it out, we'll get more video. Beautiful, look at that sandy beach over there. Okay, we are on uh, Forest Service Road 221, which on the Idaho BDR map is map six. I'm gonna head towards generally towards Grangeville. Nice wash party gravel. We got a little ranch there. We're gonna go up this draw around the corner. That looks it. Well, I noticed just starting up this road, I kept smelling berries, and sure enough, there's blackberries. Well, those are so good. These ones are a little small. I passed some bigger ones earlier. Delicious. There, I had some fruit for the day. No way to, no way to keep them from getting turned into blackberry soups. Recording. All right, so we've climbed a few miles since my berries. This is just beautiful country up in here. You can ah, travel with my car if you don't mind the washboard gravel. Here, close that so it's a little quieter. I would guess this country's probably full of bears. Well, there's a badger right there. Do you suppose he'll attack? <laughs> you silly thing. Waiting for him to spin around and put up his dukes. There he goes. Little tough guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. Don't see this stuff if you just sit at home or hang out in the city. Gotta get out in the woods. Unfortunately, you can't see across for all the smoke, otherwise, the view would be spectacular. Look at that, we still got wildflowers. It's pretty up here, smells good.
All right. Okay. In the middle of this uh, route between Riggins and Grangeville. And we're just going to walk this thing down these rocks using the clutch and the front brake. At least for a second, anyway. First gear it down the rest of the way. That didn't go as far as I thought it was gonna, as far as its rockiness. It's an old adage, slow is pro. If it takes me all day to do this section, it takes me all day and I'll get to where I'm going tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna come up here. Time yesterday not doing this. Ride it. I'm getting stuck. Hand her up. Uh, pick our way through the nasties. Yeehaw. Thanks to the Forest Service for putting all these giant rocks on this hillside, huh? Break it a little bit. First. Uh, real gravel. Wonder how long this is gonna last. Uh, right about there. Oh, in there. Hey. I like real gravel, especially when it's packed. <laughs> Is this the Florence cabin? There's a cabin there. Good spot to take a quick break and reconnoiter the map and the GPS. She's a haunt. Check this out. Property of the United States. A little bit. And full of squirrel turds. I don't want to sleep in that. Let's take a break here. I'm on the Snake River Road, along the Snake River, uh, just south of uh, Clarkston, Lewiston. And this road here, it says Weisenfels Ridge Road. I'm riding this because I grew up next to uh, Jim Weisenfels in Valley Fort, Washington. And his dad and uncles and whatnot, was, if I remember the story correctly, pioneered a lot of this country back in the day. And Jim's dad uh, homesteaded way, way up there towards Anatone. I've been to his property once turkey hunting many years ago. Uh, Jim died several years ago, and he was just a really, really neat guy. And I thought, I'm going to ride a road named after his family to see how it goes. Kind of surprised it's actually paved right here. I'm mean, going to guess the pavement will end, but I could be wrong. Anyhow, Weissenfels Ridge Road. That's 86 degrees. But we're just coming out of the Snake River. That's kind of like the north end of the Hell's Canyon, so it gets hot. There we go. 
tape it in. Let's change the anti-lock brakes. Off-road mode. What that does is it turns off the ABS in here. Makes it a little easier to stop on the dirt and gravel. Members only. Must be a hunt club in here or something. Yep, lease land, members only, next four miles. That would be private hunting ground. Be a good deal there, up down here. Maybe, maybe sheep hunting if a person can get a tag. Water in that little creek there to our right. Kind of surprised. It climbs and climbs and climbs. See it off there to the right. It just let's go to the ridge. <laughs> Anyhow, old Jim, uh, he was a businessman in Spokane for a long time. He owned some kind of a factory. I don't remember what they made. I think they made machines that made stuff. I have no idea. It's been so long. Anyhow, I grew up uh, two doors down from them, out in Valley Ford, Washington was actually rural. I used to raise cows and pigs. His wife, Dorothy, used to raise flowers. And she had a beautiful flower garden behind the house. Well, one day, my cows got out. What made her flowers? You know, I never did own up to that. Probably should have hunted. But I was just a kid. I was scared. I heard of my cows back. Tightened up the fence. I suppose they always wondered. There she is, beautiful Snake River, Hell's Canyon that way.
I said earlier, we're gonna go way up that ridge. I was looking at that tree over there on the switchback. Almost to that. We'll see how far this goes. This thing climbs fast. <laughs> Snake River's off to the right over there. Whatever that creek is down there. Wisenfels Ridge Road. Lewiston, Idaho, Clarkston, Washington, just off in the distance. The homestead that Jim Weisenfels grew on is probably not in this little eyebrow, but maybe the next one or two over. Looks kind of familiar. The Weisenfels family that sees this video, shoot me a message. There's some cows. Maybe we ought to stop and ask them, where's the old Weisenfels homestead? That cow is going to lift its leg and pee. Hey, which way to the Weisenfels homestead? Yeah, they don't know. These cows must have moved in from another state. They don't know nothing. power. Which Jim says when he grew up they didn't have power. Which I believe. <laughs> that might have been the, the old road down into there right there. <laughs> well anyway, I'm close to it somehow, some way. It's around here. Around right on there somewhere. Harbin Grade Road. Hey, that means it goes up and down the hill. Weisenfels Ridge Road. Well, this is a good time to get a drink and a map check and a pee break. I'll turn the video off for that. That might actually be the old driveway right there. But I don't see a mailbox. Okay camera off. So just off that intersection where I just stopped for a break. There's this driveway here. Yep, there's a old barn or something over there. I'm pretty sure this was the way. I will show my dad who's 83 and he may not remember either. He came with me on that trip. He said it was over 20 years ago. But we took our trailer down a little farm road just like that, right through the trees. Man, is it pretty in there. Full of tur I'd never shot a turkey in there, but they were there. I'm just a bad turkey hunter. Call me a vegetarian <laughs> when it comes to hunting sometimes. Well, let's check the hard and grade road. Sitting here, I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. You. 
you and me We meant to be In the great outdoor Forever free give you much for road. Yep, should be just up around the corner a couple miles. Let's go rehydrate over there. Well, I thought we might want to see this a little bit of this wide highway, Highway 129. I believe is the number. Between Anatone heading towards Enterprise, Oregon. I'm sure this road has some kind of special name for it because at the top of the hill, it's at really windy, 40 miles an hour for 13 miles. <laughs> it's not quite the old White Bird Hill, but from back in the day, but pretty close. I just stopped and talked to a guy that was up on the flat and above this. He's heading this way. He's on a KTM Duke of some displacement. Didn't see what it was. But he said he came from Portland just to ride this road. Well, I can see why. Route planning serves me correct because I haven't looked that far forward on the map today. This will lead me down to the Grand Ronde River. I think. We'll figure out when we get to the bottom. Ooh, the winds are blowing up there. Wow. It just done slowed me down and I'm going downhill. Look at that. That's ah, probably not quite the Stelvio Pass over in wherever that is in Europe, Italy, I think, maybe. But it'll do. down for that matter. Well, we're gonna go 
clear down to the bottom there on the right. Uh, I love it. Sure beats driving on a straight and boring interstate. But woo, it's getting warm. It's 75 on the top of the hill. It's 86 here. Definitely gonna have to stop and rehydrate at the bottom. Eight miles to go. Oh, speaking of Swift, see that? Now, if I was Mr. Swift driver, I think I'd find a different route. I have not seen a runaway truck ramp on this thing yet. Catching not so here pretty quick, not so swift. Yep, not so. Oh, and his brakes are hot. Smell them. Better be using that Jake brake. Smoking them brakes. Almost smoking. I wonder if he's ever driven this hill before. 